What up? I'm Josh Paulson, and today we're going to talk about Super Mario 64's beloved story. People have been going through the story of Super Mario 64 for a really long time. It's the feature of speedruns. It's... Wait, what did you think I was talking about? Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. Yours truly. No. What? That's what you thought I was talking about? See... We have this division in our heads of gameplay versus story that is completely made up. So let's talk about what a story is. So a story is something that happens. It seems like a very simple definition, but it's actually extremely powerful because it shows us that, well, you know, anything that happens, <laughs> it can basically be broken into a story. And this is really helpful for story development, but for now I'm not going to argue for the definition as much as show how it applies to Super Mario 64. So let's look at the story of when you raced a penguin down a slide, or what about the story when you beat the bob King? What about the story when you opened treasure chests in a sunken ship? What about the story when you defeated Bowser? But we have this mindset in game development so often that, well, that's separate. You know, that's gameplay. Gameplay is not story. But that's not true. What is the medium of this cutscene? Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. This is video. This is not video game. And so often when we talk about gameplay versus story, what we really mean is video game versus video. Video game is interactive. It's what you play. But a video is not interactive. Now, neither of these media are better or worse, but when we praise a video game based on its video and not on the video game, something's wrong. But in Super Mario 64, we love the video game. Why do we love the video game? You might say it's because of absence of story. That's not true. It's because of the stories that we're creating. A story is something that happens. In real life, we are living stories all of the time. You're having a story right now if you watched this video. Story can be interactive or non-interactive. And in Super Mario 64, as you're running around and you're racing penguins and you're dropping penguins off cliffs and doing all sorts of amazing things, you are creating stories. The gameplay is story. It's not gameplay versus story. Gameplay is story. And so when you try to separate the two, what happens is that you get this unnatural break. And you say, well, you know what? I really want to have a great game. I want to have great gameplay. So I'm going to diminish the story. When really the question that you need to ask is, how do I help my players get fantastic stories out of this experience? People love Super Mario 64 because of the stories that they are creating. Yeah, yeah, Princess Peach needs saving, and, you know, she made you a cake, and that's great, but... Really, those are just bookends. And those are part of the overall story, which is you save Peach. But we have all these mini stories throughout. We have, as it were, 120 plus mini stories inside of the macro story. Yes, we're saving Peach, but we're collecting stars. So I'd like to present a thought that as game developers, our goal is not to create great gameplay and great story, but our goal is to help the players create great stories. Now, video games are interactive, and that means that the player may choose to make a great story or a really terrible story by running around in circles and dropping penguins off cliffs and stuff like that. But when we give them that opportunity, they get a responsibility, and they have the responsibility to make it awesome. The goal here as creators is to help our players create great stories. I cannot force the story to be great in a video game. I can force the story to be great in a cutscene. This is why so many game developers turn to cutscenes. They have control. They can make what they want to have happen, happen. But here's the problem. What you are saying is that the most important parts of the story should not be in the player's hands. You are saying that the player cannot be trusted with the most essential parts of the story because it will mess it up. And you're right. They will mess it up. Anybody who says the players will mess up the great story are correct but you're missing an opportunity to connect. You're missing an opportunity for them to create a great story. Some players will, some players won't. In Super Mario 64's case, people have been creating great stories ever since it released. Through speedrunning, through casual plays, through 
casual speed runs and through enjoying the experience. Gameplay is story. Gameplay is interactive story. And when you make your goal to create a story that the players can't screw up, you are going against the very idea of a video game, which is a story where the player has responsibility. Gameplay is story. Don't try to make a great story outside of your players. Try to make a great story with your players. This is why people love Super Mario 64 story so much.